Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to those of you joining us through the beauty of the sanctuary in this building. Good morning to those of you joining us through the beauty of the sanctuaries of wherever you may be on Zoom. And welcome to any who might be viewing this worship service through our YouTube page at any time. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And a special welcome to those who might be visiting for the first time or might be returning for the first time in quite some time. We are so glad you are here. Welcome, welcome one and all. Thank you to lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. Please stand in body or spirit as you are able and join me in this morning's responsive call to worship. I will praise God in every moment and through every situation. Through my words and my actions, my life will pay tribute to God. Whenever the humble of heart hear of God's greatness, they will celebrate too. Come and lift up God's name with me. Let's praise God's name together. And let's praise God's name with our first hymn this morning. For the beauty of the earth, number 28 in the hymnal.
join your spirits with mine in prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to praise your name together. In song, in word, together we offer our praise. And we give you thanks for this day, for the beauty of this earth, even as you call us to care for it more tenderly, more purposefully, and so that we have this earth to continue for generations to come. For the beauty, for the work, for the ministry, for the praise, we praise you, O oh God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
We so often want to follow Jesus on our own terms. We join our voices now in confession. When we long to be your church, O oh God, transformed and transforming, yet cling to our comfortable ways, Lord, have mercy on us. When we yearn to hear and honor your still speaking voice, but are fearful of new insights, that challenge our old assumptions. Christ, have mercy on us. When we long to live into your kingdom, here and now, yet struggle to move forward in bold, daring, loving faith, Lord, have mercy on us. Take heart, get up. Jesus is calling you, calling us. That says calling to us, but it's calling you, calling me. We trust in the one who has guided the church for two millennia and is not stopping now. Through Christ, God forgives us, flat out forgives us, and continues to call us into a beloved community of mutual love and forgiveness. Let us celebrate this mercy of God by greeting each other now with a sign of Christ's peace. So please rise and body your spirit as you are able. Move about, greet one another with a sign of peace and reconciliation as we do so through the Zoom chat as well. Okay, as we return to our seats, we have, uh, Beth is going to share a moment with Bobby and all of us, the child within all of us. Oh good, Suzanne's coming too. Thanks for coming up, Bobby, so I didn't have to do this by myself. It's good to see you. So, how old were you four years ago? Eight, and remind me when your birthday is. Okay, so you were seven when the pandemic started. Do you remember that? Yeah. You remember that, Suzanne? And do you remember there was a special prayer? Do you remember when we did Sunday school on Zoom? Every week? Yeah, and we did all sorts of fun things and we delivered stuff to your houses. Do you remember the prayer that we did every week and we still do it? Remember this, this is from the Sunday school room. Can you read that out loud? Can you, we use the microphone, is that okay? May we be bold, may we be daring, may we be loved. Yes, that was the prayer we started during the pandemic and we still say it. So, any idea what bold means? Daring. 
like daring, that's true. <laughs> so like brave. When we do something we're a little bit afraid of. So one of the things that I know some people are a little bit afraid of is asking for help. And isn't that a silly thing to be afraid of? But we are, right? At school, because maybe the kids will make fun of us. Maybe the teacher will think we're not as smart as we think we are if we ask for help. If we're trying to look up something in the Bible for Miss Suzanne and we cannot find it, and we're like, I don't even know where this is. I'm just going to hide it so she doesn't know I can't find it. So it can be really bold or brave to ask for help when we need it. I bet you ask your mom and your grandma for help sometimes, don't you? Yes. Do you ever ask for help? Sometimes. <laughs> so remembering to ask for help, and somebody else we can always ask for help makes us feel like we're being wrapped in a big hug of love saying that somebody loves us is God. And did you hear Pastor Shelley? She said something this morning. What was that phrase? That God flat out forgives us. You know what flat out means, right? No strings attached. God forgives us. So God's not going to be mad if we ask for help. If we say, I am really sad today. And just try to close our eyes and say a little prayer. Just like we might say to our friends or our mom or our dad. So one way to be bold is to be vulnerable. To say to somebody, I don't know this thing or I'm a little scared and I need some help. So that is part of our prayer in Sunday school. The first one, may we be bold. So when we need to ask, we need to, when, we are, when we need something, we need to ask. It's not good to hold it inside. So whatever that is. So for our prayer before we go up for Sunday school, let's just do this one again. And if any of the adults want to follow along, you can. I think most of you know it now too. So I'll just say, dear God, may we be bold. May we be daring. May we be love. Amen. And now it's time to go up to Sunday school.
morning's first scripture reading is from Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord, and the Lord answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to God and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who revere God and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in the Lord. <clears throat> the second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Jesus and the disciples came to Jericho. As all of them, along with a large crowd, were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered Bartimaeus to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, Jesus is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, Bartimaeus sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus said to Jesus, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately Bartimaeus regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. God's word for God's people. God, God is, is still speaking. speaking. was bold. Bartimaeus lived the phrase, go for it. Bartimaeus was not about to let this chance to get close to Jesus pass him by. So he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many of those traveling with Jesus, as the story tells us, perhaps even some of Jesus' disciples, essentially told Bartimaeus to shut up. But bold Bartimaeus refused to be silenced by the crowd. Bold Bartimaeus cried out loudly and repeatedly so Jesus would hear him. Faith is not always quiet. Faith is not always respectable. Faith is not timid. Faith is not passive. Sometimes our cries of faith are pretty in your face. Jesus, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus, bold, insistent, loud Bartimaeus, got Jesus' attention. So Jesus stopped and had someone call Bartimaeus to come on over. Take heart. Get up. Jesus is calling you. That's all Bartimaeus needed. Threw off his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Now Bartimaeus' boldness was a full body experience. A bold voice became a series of bold gestures. Throwing off one's cloak, more than likely the only cloak he owned, he was a blind beggar. Sprang to his feet and bolted over to be near 
Jesus. Boldly drawing near to Jesus. Then Jesus said to Bartimaeus, What do you want me to do for you? There's that question again. It's a question that surfaces in three of our four Gospels, including the time when Jesus asked two of his disciples, James and John, that very same question. Perhaps you remember it from last Sunday's Gospel reading. What do you want me to do for you? Now, as a blind beggar, we can imagine Bartimaeus may have answered that question in a variety of ways. Give me some food to eat. Give me a new cloak or many new cloaks. Grant me to sit at either your right or left hand in glory. Give me a dry, safe place to sleep. Give me all the money I need to care for myself. Yet, not surprisingly, Bartimaeus boldly chooses this answer. My teacher, let me see again. What do you want me to do for you? I don't know about you, but this question haunts me. What do you want me to do for you? In this season of our life together, in these days that seem to be accelerating toward a momentous general election for our nation, and a momentous vote by two congregations discerning God's future for their mission and ministry in this time and place. And in this season of our life together, as our journey as people and pastor moves deeper into its 10th year, can you believe that? Has it really been 10 years? Well, my gray hairs, I probably have 10 more years of gray hair, but that's okay. Yet we also know that this shared journey of ours will conclude in eight months. In this season of our life together, I believe Jesus is asking us, what do you want me to do for you? What do we want from Jesus? Do we want Jesus to ex continue to extend God's extravagant welcome further than we can even possibly imagine? Do we want to, Jesus to take us deeper into the study of our Bible? Do we want Jesus to push us to better care for God's good creation, even as it cries out in extremists at every turn? Do we want Jesus to help us name and hold our grief? Do we want Jesus to lead us deeper into prayer that opens our hearts, opens our eyes, opens our minds, to the needs of one another and all of God's children? Do we want Jesus to claim us anew and give us even bolder hearts and voices and actions for justice and peace and for bringing a bit more of God's kingdom to life here on earth? Do we want Jesus to teach us new ways of sharing our faith with one another? Do we want Jesus to comfort us to challenge us, to leave us alone, to guide us, to accompany us. What do we want from Jesus? And I wonder if, instead of only seeing discipleship and in turn stewardship of our many assets, individually and as a congregation, as the process or time or spiritual practice of exploring or discerning what God wants us to give back, I wonder if perhaps by spending time in prayer and reflection for these 28 days until our congregational vote, centering on what we want from Jesus, we might more readily see what Jesus needs from us to begin to move us boldly into the future God is already shaping for us. For as Jeremiah prophesied so many centuries ago, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. 
I do believe Jesus wants us, as the writer of a New Testament book we call Hebrews implored, to take heart, get up, and fearlessly, confidently, and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. For I also believe when we do that, when we are bold enough and clear enough to ask Jesus what we want Jesus to do for us, then and perhaps most fully then, or even only then, may we receive God's mercy and find grace to help us in good time for every need. Even here and even now. And so we pray, may it be so, good and gracious and loving God, may it be so. Amen. So let us now sing of the amazing grace that is offered each of us and all of us. That hymn can be found in both hymnals in your pre-rack. You can choose red 233 or black 565. I will let you know. We'll sing five verses and the fifth verse is only in black 565. So if you choose 233 for the first four, you're gonna have to flip to the black one for five. 547. Really? Did I goof it up? Oh, I did. I have something else in here. Thank you, Caitlin. 547 is correct in the black hymnal. I'm glad somebody is paying attention. Please rise in body or spirit as you're able that we might join in singing Amazing Grace. As we continue to have tremendous gratitude for all the ways in which all of you continue to offer your time, talent, and treasure to help us build and serve community in Christ's name, for your offerings through the offering boxes in the front and back of the church, or through our online giving portal, through our website, or though we still take cold hard cash. We take it all, <laughs> and we take it to build and serve community in God's name, your time and talent as well. So thank you. And now we also give thanks for the gift of this morning's offertory.
Our worship now turns to a time of prayer together. We will begin it in silence as we gather our joys, sorrows, and uncertainties both through the Zoom chat and through the, prayer, the green prayer cards that are in your pew rack before you. If you have a prayer request there, please fill that out. After some time of silence for that gathering, I will come through the sanctuary, pick up the prayer cards, weave those prayers together with those in the Zoom chat before God and one another. We will follow that with a responsive acclamation of the goodness of our God, some words of pastoral prayer, and then a sharing in our Lord's Prayer together. So let us begin then to pray together in silence as we gather our joys, sorrows, and uncertainties.
all those that are still deep within our hearts, sometimes even without words formed around them yet. We choose as an act of faith to acclaim that God is good. All the time. Let us continue to pray. Good and gracious and holy and steadfast loving God. We give thanks that we can offer our prayers to you, both in the quiet of our own time of prayer, but also within the congregation of your people that gathers today. For it is here also that we can share our joys, our sorrows, our, and our uncertainties. We can name those for whom we seek prayer and healing and hope. We can offer the possibility of our own prayers being strengthened by sharing them with others. Even if we are simply sitting here, sharing them in the depths of our hearts. For we know, O oh God, that, that you hear us when we speak and when we weep and when we laugh and when we grieve and when we jump for joy in the latest pile of leaves that has blown up in our front yard rather than cursing the fact we have to sweep them away. However it is that we pray, O oh God, you hear us and we give thanks. We give thanks that you gather our prayers together in the depths of your love. And you hold them even as you hold us, even as you hold those for whom we pray. So thank you, God for allowing us to pray. And thank you, God, for Jesus teaching us how to pray, even as Jesus taught those first disciples when they had the good sense to ask how they might do that. For this prayer has tumbled down to us through the ages, and it is a prayer we join in praying with Christians all over the world and throughout time, as we now join our voices together and say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the circle Amen. Yeah.
hymn is at number 476 in our black hymnals. We are going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of My Life Flows On in Endless Song. Please do rise in body or spirit as you are able for our closing hymn. to join us down the hallway here to the parlor for pastries in the parlor after worship. Also a reminder that we're getting close. I'm going to need your ballots if I don't already have them for our thanks for giving um, honoree of the year. Uh, need those either today or no later than um, in a week. It's in the bulletin. Look it up. And you need your bulletin anyway because we've got this responsive benediction, although I think we many of us now know the all part. But in your mighty power and, and great tenderness, O oh God, give us strength and courage to continue to build and serve community in Christ's name. May we be bold. May we be daring. May we be loved.